Today's topic is our favorite all-wheel drive cars that aren't Audis. So we're gonna kick things off with a nice practical choice, the W204 C300 4Matic from Mercedes-Benz. With all credit to Audi for taking a technology that was basically sidelined of just being used in trucks and commercial vehicles and stuffing it into an everyday sedan, there are plenty of awesome all-wheel drive European cars out there that don't necessarily have four rings on the front grille. The W204 C300 is basically just like an E46 3 Series, if you're familiar with that. It's about the same size, the chassis is very similar in terms of its layout and handling, and it's a comparable type of European sedan. So while the 3.0-liter V6 provides adequate, if not thrilling, performance, when paired with the Mercedes 4Matic all-wheel drive, it becomes quite a formidable all-weather machine. The 4Matic used in the C300 has a 45-55 front-rear standard torque split, but with the active center differential, can send up to 70 percent of power all the way to the front or all the way to the rear which basically means that no matter what you're up against this can probably power through it that's combined with a really nice simple elegant clean interior and with a great chassis the c300 is probably the best all-around all-wheel drive german sedan on the market today for the price and with that let's kick it over to our friends in sweden Up next is the Volvo S60 all-wheel drive. This is the one built on the P2 chassis, sold from 2002 to 2009. Unlike most of the other cars we're talking about here, the S60 uses a Haldex all-wheel drive system. And I can hear you screaming right now, the Haldex isn't a real all-wheel drive system. Real all-wheel drive systems are full-time four-wheel drive like a Quattro. No, that's, no. Leave those arguments back on VW Vortex, Fortitude, whatever forums that you came from, because I can assure you the Haldex is a great system and can do very, very well when it comes time to get the job done. So the S60 gets its power from a classic five-cylinder turbocharged engine sitting up front. It makes about 200 horsepower, which isn't gonna set the world on fire, but that's okay. When you're in your S60, the front wheels start to slip, the Haldex kicks in, starts sending up to 50% of the torque to the rear wheels, and it will get you through. And while it remains front-wheel drive based, as you would expect from a Swedish company like Volvo, the S60 still has plenty of all-weather acumen and unlike a lot of other cars on the list, it is far less likely to get lost in your average parking lot. Back in the day, Audi went racing to prove that Quattro all-wheel drive was for more than just snow and ice. And if there's any company out there that already knew this, it was probably Porsche. Since about the mid 1980s, Porsche has been putting all-wheel drive into one model or another since the introduction of the 959 supercar. In the mid 1990s, Porsche introduced all-wheel drive on their top of the line turbo model in the 993. But one of the best all-wheel drive performance bargains out there today is probably gonna be the 996 Porsche 911 Turbo. What's interesting about the all-wheel drive system on the 996 Turbo is that it's actually remarkably simple. It's a viscous coupling all-wheel drive system, which means it's totally passive and it's normally rearward biased. You hit the gas, the power goes to the ground. If the rear wheels start to slip, the synchro coupling will lock up and it will begin to send power forward. So as simple as it is, it works. The 996 911 Turbo makes about 415 horsepower 415 pound-feet of torque, that'll get you to 60 miles an hour in just 4.1 seconds, which for a car that's basically 20 years old is not bad at all. The 996-911 Turbo remains one of the better performance buys out there as the market still sleeps on this model a little bit compared to some of the others, but it is waking up. So if you do plan on getting one, you should probably buy one tomorrow or maybe like right now when this video is over. Well, we're waiting. Maybe you want a Porsche, but maybe you want to carry more than one passenger and maybe two pieces of luggage. And for that, you're probably going to want to look at something a little bit bigger. For me, that's the Cayenne GTS. The Cayenne GTS that we're talking about is the 957 type, which was sold from 2008 
the 2010. The Cayenne S itself, the base model with the 4.8 is great. The turbo is crazy fast, but the GTS with its aggressive body kit, rowdy exhaust, bigger wheels, and lowered suspension, the GTS is definitely the party animal of the bunch. The GTS is a 405 horsepower naturally aspirated brute that can do zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds with an optional manual transmission. Just because it's more biased towards on-road performance and handling doesn't mean it can't get the job done off-road either. The GTS, like all other Cayennes, has the Porsche Traction Management all-wheel drive system, which is an active center differential and a 3862 front rear torque split right out of the box. The GTS is probably not going to be as capable off-road as a lot of the other Cayenne models for a variety of reasons. Chances are you're going to spend a lot more time going to the mall or on the way to work than you are going to spend on off-road trails. And so because of that reason, the GTS really is the most practical all-wheel drive SUV that you could ever purchase. Really, it's 100% practical. Sarcasm? You think? So 7,700 pounds, it's definitely the practical choice, guaranteed. Well, let's bring things back down to earth with the Mark 7 Golf Sport Wagon 4Motion. 4Motion is Volkswagen's brand name for Haldex all-wheel drive, which we already talked about on the S60. The big difference here is that the Sport Wagon is a very new car and it uses a more advanced Haldex system on it. Sport Wagon is based on the MQB platform, which is the exact same thing as the Mark 7 GTI and the Golf R, which means any of the upgrades or any of the things you might do modification-wise to one of those cars can be done to the Sport Wagon and it's just as capable. So you have turbocharged power, available six-speed or DSG transmissions, and they even sold a Golf R version of the wagon in Europe. In the US, there's also an all-track version, which is basically slightly lifted and has a slightly different body kit on it. Sadly, the Mark 7 Sport Wagon is discontinued in the United States. While there is no word whether or not the Mark 8 Golf will be offered in the Sport model version, there's still plenty out there on the used market as they were sold in the US from 2017 to 2020. Make mine, Great Falls Green, and a manual, please. How about new? So needless to say, we can never leave out BMW when it comes to talking about all-wheel drive cars that aren't Audis. And for that, we're gonna take it back to the 80s and the E30 325iX. On the outside, the E30 325iX looks a lot like any other E30, but under the skin, it is significantly different. While it has the same 2.5 liter, 160 horsepower engine, the transmission, transfer case, subframe, suspension, just about everything else mechanical is quite different from the standard E30. The standard torque split on the 325iX is 37 front, 63 rear. But what's interesting is that even though it's a passive viscous coupling system, the iX all-wheel drive system can send up to 100% of available engine torque all the way to the front or to the rear, which means it's really insanely capable in bad weather, snow, and other conditions like that. If there is any downside to the 325iX, it's that it's fairly rare. They really didn't sell a whole lot of these cars. So if you do have one, finding spare parts could be hard to come by. Added to that, it is an older car. They're basically 30 plus years old at this point, which means that failures and upkeep and things like that are gonna be more a part of your daily life than a lot of the newer cars that we're talking about today. Hopefully not every E30 325iX out there is gonna go up in flames on the side of the road, but there is a distinct possibility that that could happen. You never know. And for that, we're gonna move on to a little bit more modern car from BMW. That's probably a better choice. Let's say you want an all-wheel drive BMW and want something that's a little bit newer than something made in 1988. And honestly, I don't blame you. Daily driving, old cars, for me, that ship sailed quite a long time ago. The F30 328i xDrive. The F30 is an awesome chassis. If you take a rear-wheel drive version, you can turn it into a bad drift car. The 328i xDrive F30 was sold from 2012 2018. So these are pretty modern cars. The F30 chassis, as good as it is, it's fantastic modern BMW chassis. It is worth noting that the N20 engine that comes in the car can be a little trouble prone. 
Now, that's not to say it's a bad engine, but you do want to get one that's had all the appropriate updates done, or you may want to get ready to do some DIYs on the car. We do have those covered for you. It probably is going to include timing chains, just to warn you, but don't let that deter you. Ultimately, this car is a very good modern all-wheel drive sedan. Speaking of all-wheel drive, the BMW xDrive system is actually a very, very good, very advanced system. It uses an active center differential and has a 40-60 front and rear torque split. What that means is that one of these BMWs is going to drive a lot like a rear-wheel drive BMW, which is what makes a BMW feel like a BMW. The xDrive, as you may be aware, has exploded. It's used all over the BMW lineup, so there's a lot of these cars out there. And while the M20 engine might kind of deter you from possibly considering one of these cars, the simple fact of the matter is that will probably help keep the cost down and help keep these cars more affordable for the enthusiasts who see them for what they are, which is a good all-wheel drive buy for a car that doesn't necessarily have four rings on that front hood. It goes without saying that Audi makes a lot of awesome all-wheel drive cars. They're the benchmark in this category for a reason. But what we are trying to show here is that just because you don't want to own an Audi doesn't mean you have to skimp on having all-wheel drive. If you have a favorite all-wheel drive car that isn't on this list, drop it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, which I hope you did, throw a like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.